As Idaho's criminal ban on abortion goes into effect today, medical professionals across the state are even more concerned about the trigger law, which is more restrictive than the fetal heartbeat bill. Joe Paris now with our sister station in Boise spoke with two maternal fetal medicine doctors who say they're worried for women and doctors across the state. We have significant concerns about what the total abortion ban means for normal patient care. Dr. Lauren Miller and Dr. Kylie Cooper focus their work on maternal fetal medicine in Boise. The pair is two of more than 300 doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals that signed on to this letter, calling attention to glaring practical issues they see with Idaho's near total ban on abortion. Basically a, a public service announcement to say this is what we're really worried about, both for ourselves as physicians and how we're going to take care of our patients. Uh, and so a group of us at the coalition got together and wrote the letter and decided to publish it in the local newspaper. To be clear, the concerns expressed in the letter are not meant to be political in nature. They are practical concerns. The letter reads in part, quote, the total abortion ban and fetal heartbeat abortion ban, as they are currently written, are dangerously vague and excessively restrictive. Dr. Miller details one example. So in the total abortion ban, they define a clinically diagnosable pregnancy. So terminating any clinically diagnosable pregnancy is punishable by imprisonment for two years. A clinically diagnosable pregnancy to us as healthcare providers means many things, right? Any type of pregnancy, no matter how abnormal it might be, is still a clinically diagnosable pregnancy. So that means I could be charged for completing a, a miscarriage that still had a heartbeat, but the woman's hemorrhaging in my emergency department and it's in her best interest to get that done with for her. It could be that she's got an ectopic pregnancy. There could be a fetus implanted in her fallopian tube and a cesarean section scar, you name it, somewhere outside of the normal place for a pregnancy to be. It's still a clinically diagnosable pregnancy. That's not medical language that we use. And that is where the fear lies, is that doing our normal day-to-day -day job puts us at risk that if there's a prosecutor out there who wants to get involved and say that we ended a clinically diagnosable pregnancy, having that law signed and in our Idaho code puts us all at risk. Idaho medical professionals continue to speak out on their concerns with non-medical language being in the law, something that complicates crucial decisions that doctors need to make quickly. As a medical provider, um, we have ethical obligations, which include do no harm, to act in the best interest of the patient, to support their autonomy and decision making. Um, and these laws um, have caused a lot of conflict with those oaths and the morals that we hold as medical providers um, and it certainly keeps me awake at night. Some language in the laws leave gray areas about when a doctor can do an abortion, the pair says, and the consequences of making a life or death decision on a moment's notice is complicated by the threat of a prison sentence if someone outside of the emergency decision disagrees with an abortion decision weeks later. In the total abortion ban it is simply to prevent her death. Death is never certain until you are dead, right? It, there is a huge continuum where we know it's a possibility. Again, take ectopic pregnancy, for example. If we go back to data from the 1800s, 60% of women will die from their ectopic pregnancy. Is, you know, a 50% chance of dying enough to intervene? Is a 20% chance of dying enough to intervene? To be clear to skeptics, the pair explains that they see serious pregnancy complications very frequently, not just once in a while. We see ectopic pregnancies in general OBGYN clinics every single day. This is day-to-day -day normal activities for an OBGYN to care for complications. About one in four pregnancies ends in a miscarriage, extremely common. Uh, you know, and again, thinking back historically, the number one cause of death for women before we had modern medicine was complications from childbirth. We do not want to go back to that, right? We have modern medicine to prevent us from ever having to watch a woman die. So where does the group go from here? It's our hope that we're able to um, inform the public and to um, explain the nuances of pregnancy um, to um, to impact future legislation to try to um, reduce the harm that will come from these bans. Assuming the total abortion ban goes into effect next week is to continue gathering support to work with the legislators to likely have to introduce a new bill this year to addend the total abortion ban, to put the correct medical language into it, to have the opinions of the public put into it, uh, to make this a safer law.